Thank you. Uh, I hope you can see my screen already. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, as already mentioned, my name is Oskar. Uh, my talk today is about how to develop an OSSC client with the OSSC API from Spark Systems. It's a, a kind of a, a quick hands-on tour. But first, uh, who is Spark Systems? Especially Spark Systems Central Europe, where I am from. Um, we are a sister company of Spark Systems uh, HQ. HQ is the headquarter of Spark Systems. Around the world, there are uh, many sister companies. Uh, Spark Systems Central Europe is one of the biggest uh, sister companies. And uh, Spark Systems uh, Central Europe is also a part of the Libra Group. Um, the Libra Group consists of uh, Spark Systems Central Europe, Spark Service Central Europe, and Libra Libra. Uh, what does Spark Systems provide? Uh, is a modeling platform called Enterprise Architect. It's the Enterprise Architect client. Uh, it's a client application, and uh, we can uh, model different languages, uh, starting from UML, SysML, up to BPMN, Archimate, and 80 uh, additional languages which are currently supported. And then um, there is ProCloud Server, it's the Enterprise Architect Server application, which provides the uh, OSLC RESTful API. There are two additional products called WebEA and ProLaborate. Uh, these are web clients. So this is a FAT client installed on your local machine. And these are two web clients which already use OSLC as uh, the data backend to get uh, and manipulate the data from the Enterprise Architect repository. So the technology overview looks like this. So here we have uh, the application server. We have the enterprise architect client, and we have a web browser. The enterprise architect client itself can, of course, be directly connected to the enterprise architect repository, which may be hosted on an uh, RDBMS, uh, but can also be uh, connected to a file-based database, but it is a database. Um, or we can use the ProCloud server so we are HTTPS connection. And this uh, scenario here, Enterprise Architect, the client itself, doesn't use OSLC, but uh, the Web EA and the ProLaborate, which can be hosted on a, a web server, um, yeah, they use uh, OSLC already. Uh, the OSLC interface, what the ProCloud server currently provides. But in this talk, I would like to talk about how to write. Oh, yeah, this is how, how uh, Web EA uh, looks like. Web EA is a web application which is more or less just a viewer, a, a dynamic viewer on the model we have in, um, in our model repository. This is a PHP application using the OSLC uh, interface and ProLaborate um, is also a web application, but the, the purpose of uh, ProLaborate is more to have a dashboard-like collaboration tool um, for those who are interested in the model data, but uh, cannot or will not use Enterprise Architect, the Fed client. Um, this is an ASP.NET application, also using the OSLC API from the ProCloud server. But now in this talk, I would like to uh, go into the details how to write my own application uh, with the OSLC interface. So I, will, I would like to explain the OSLC uh, interface what, what what is currently supported by, by Spark Systems. Um, yeah, let's go to the details. Yeah, because you know that basic communication pattern is um, we have the client and the client sends uh, yeah a URL to the to the ProCloud server in this case to the OLCC interface and we get the response. And we will see uh, what is currently supported uh, by the OS, OSLC API from Spark Systems and how the response look like and how we can work with this. So first of all, um, when we call something on the ProCloud server, we need to be logged in first, yeah? So this is the first call we have to send. So we have to send the server to the server to a specific model. This call was a CAM login. The response will be this RDF XML, which consists of the following data, the version of the ProCloud server implementation with the uh, OSSC API. So that's the version of the OSSC API. We get uh, the, the, the kind of license we have on the ProCloud server. So it's the, Pro, uh, the enterprise license. 
we get the uh, expiration date of the license. And most important, we get the authentication token, which is required uh, at each OSLC call to the ProCloud server. And uh, also important uh, in Enterprise Architect, um, there is a feature called Enterprise Architect Security. And if uh, an Enterprise Architect repository has security enabled, we need an additional login and username uh, and username and password. And this indicates if, um, if we need to, to ask uh, the user for the username and, and password, in addition to just what we get with the login here, uh, to get the authentication token. So this is just a token we need for any call. Um, if security is enabled, we need an additional uh, request for the uh, user credentials, and then we get the token and we can work with this. Good. The version number is really important because uh, the application we are implementing um, assumes uh, that we get specific response data like this XML, RDF XML. And in future versions of Enterprise Architect or the ProCloud server, um, something can be changed, like we, we get more uh, or different informations. And maybe my client is not able to, to process this data. So with this uh, version, I can create a, um, an information like this. This is from the web EA, the application, uh, which expects to have um, a ProCloud server uh, version. It was a C implementation version 4.2.60.2100. But the current uh, ProCloud server has already a newer version 4.2.65.25.2250. Yeah? So we have a newer version, but as, you, as we will see in the end of the talk, it's still working, but it's just a warning that maybe uh, it's better to update because maybe it could, could, could happen that something is not working as expected. Good. Now, how can we write our own, um, uh, what can we query from, from the model? It's, it's actually a lot, yeah? Uh, in the end of the talk, I will show you uh, the whole list which is currently supported, but we can query the model and we can also query the diagram image from the model, like the model root packages, diagrams, elements, and all the element features like operations uh, receptions, uh, attributes, connectors between uh, elements, and many things more. Yeah, many, many meta informations. Uh, what we can store in the model. So, when we would like to start with uh, implementing an uh, OSCC client, uh, we need to like to have something similar like this here. Or I will quickly jump into Web EA. Where's it here? Is it? So this is the web EA and how it could look like. So this is one of the web applications which is already using OSLC. If I'm logged into my model, my Hugo, it looks like this. And here you see the warning. Um, yeah, and here I can run through my through my um, through my model to my project browser. Here I have package one, and here I have a diagram. If I click on this. Uh, okay, diagram is not rendered, it looks like this. Um, and here I see informations about the class I have here in this model. So this is how a client could look like. In order to build a client like this, what do we need? First, we need to get the model root. And we can get the model root by just calling OSSC AM QC. If we send this as a respond, we will get the following. Oh, yes. Uh, we have forgot to uh, add our uh, authentication token because then if we if we just call this uh, uh, URL, we, when we post it to, or when, when you call this uh, with the uh, uh, HTTP get, we get the following message. We, we have missed the authentication token. So what we have to add is the authentication token, what we have got previously from our um, OSSC login. So we have to add it. So we have to add this to each of our call. And when we do this, uh, we get as a response, the root packages of my model. So here, this is how it looks like in, in Enterprise Architect. I can also show you the same model in Enterprise Architect was what we previously saw in, um, in WebEA. So this is how it looks like. 
So I have my two packages, my two root models. Good. So this responds here to the first root and this responds to the second root. This is the current information we, we, we provide. Um, this is uh, the title of this uh, resource. It's called model. Um, the type of this resource is a model root and it is a package. Yeah. And so here we have the further link to the to the nested resources. So if we if we use this as the next query, we will get the following. Yeah. By the way, in enterprise architect, everything has a unique ID. It's called the global unique ID. And um, to indicate that uh, uh, we are dealing here with the model root, there is a prefix uh, to this GUID. It's called MR for model root. So if we send this to the uh, ProCloud server, we get as a response yeah, the following XML, um, which represents the package. So this data represents my package information. Again, I have the title, which is package one. Uh, the type is a package. And then a lot of additional meta information, like here, uh, the creation date, modification date, the author of this package, the identifier, again, with the prefix, this is a package. So we have the prefix PK for package and the unique ID and the additional resources we can find here uh, because this package uh, contains features and nested resources, we can follow this link again, and then we will get the next resource. So if we send this, yeah, by the way, this is the resource or this is the unique ID we can use to create something new based on this package or within this package. So when we uh, send now this uh, query to the nested resources of this package, as a response, we will get the following. So this is how it looks like an enterprise architect. These are the OSLC provided data. So here we have data about the diagram. So here the resource type is a diagram. The name is also package one, like the package. Um, the type of this diagram is custom. And here the prefix of this uh, GUID is now DG for diagram. And here we have uh, the response for the containing class with more or less the same uh, or similar uh, properties. Of course, the specific properties are different. So this namespace is from Spark Systems, Spark Systems status. And here, for instance, the diagram has no status, but the model element has. And this is not, yeah, in Enterprise Architect, we distinguish between diagrams, packages, model root packages, connectors, and elements. And this is what we see here. Uh, resource type is element. Here, the resource type is diagram. Good. Now let's uh, focus on the element itself. So here you see that. Hey. Um... Okay, no question. So uh, here we see um, the, the backlink to the resource which contains this uh, element. This is the package which contains this uh, class. And here I have the link to all the features uh, my class contains. So if we follow the link to the features, so I have to state OSSC AM features with a unique ID with the prefix and of course the user identifier. If I send this, I get as a response all the attributes or all the features I have. And here I have an attribute and an operation. So this corresponds to my uh, attribute with all the attribute information. Here I have my operation, all the operation information. And another feature which is not listed in the project browser here uh, is the tag value I have uh, added to this class, this one. Good. Now, how can we create something new uh, with the OSLC API? I have two examples. I will create a new element. I will create a connector. So uh, when we 
create something new, we have to post something. Yeah, we have to post a URL and the post data. Uh, the post URL is uh, we need always a CAM, a creation factory. We would like to create a resource and we have to post this URL. And by the way, this is something we get from uh, when we call the service provider. Uh, in a minute, I will show you the implemented client and, and how does it work. And, uh, and then I will also call the service provider. We, we will see more uh, details about this. Um, with calling the service provider, that ProCloud server, the OSSC implementation of it will tell me everything what the current version of the OSSC API provides. So the data I have to post is, or this is a subset of it here. Uh, I would like to create a new class. So here's the data type is class. The name is the title, it's the other class. Um, the parent resource is the package I have selected. And the author of this uh, new class should be called OSLC client. And of course, here I, I need also the authentication token, what we have got from our um, login request. The response will be uh, the resource which has been created. So that's this one. And in Enterprise Architect, it looks like this. So we have within, when we we have, when we have selected the package and create, or we, when we have selected this as the uh, parent resource uh, ID, the other class will be contained within this package. Good. Now let's create a new connector. Uh, we also have to post data. So we have to call OSLC AM creation factory resource link. We post this and the post data looks like this. Again, we could have more properties, but I just uh, used the subset. Um, this is already the result. So here I have created a, a link from one package to the other package. So here I have the, the source GUID, again, with the prefix, I have the target GUID. So actually the whole uh, resource path to this, to this resource, in this case, it's the same. Yeah. Um, and the response is, again, the source element which contains the, the connector. So it's not the connector itself, it's the resource which contains the connector. If I query again this resource, I will get another link, another resource link to this, uh, to this uh, element here, to this resource, which, uh, which uh, provides me all the connectors which are currently available at this resource. Um, well, and here um, that uh, I would like to create a connector it's listed here so that I create from this source element an association to the target element. I can also state the name and I can also state the description, but this is also uh, uh, everything here is, um, is optional. Good, yeah, of course, uh, the user, uh, the authentication token must also be provided, otherwise I will get an uh, error message. Good. Um, the, the complete description about uh, the current implementation of the OSLC API can be found here. If I open this web page, so it's the architecture management 2.0 implementation. In more details, this here is a, a quick reference to all my resources I have. So here I have all the resource shapes to get all the information about what I can. Uh, query and what I can uh, create and what properties are provided from, yeah, so this is all the things we have. And here we have also all the calls and especially important for the, not the query provider, but the uh, creation factory. So when we create something, that's the call. And this is the XML we have to post to this to this uh, yeah, OSLC uh, ProCloud server in order to create something new. In this case, we can create a package or an element, and then we have a long list of what, what is currently supported, what we can create or uh, update or modify and uh, delete as well. Okay, so 
Now I would like to go to the uh, short live demo. So here, this is, I will just recompile it. So it's really live demo. <laughs> and uh, starts this uh, OSLC client implementation. This is not a client like I showed you here in uh, as the web EA or Prolaborate like here. This is really the end user client. What I've done here is more something in between. It's a, it's a client for the OSLC developer, yeah? Um, here I have uh, to configure uh, the different OSLC uh, servers i'm using one connection which is called horst and here i have my call but i will start here with the service provider yeah if i call this i will get from the current uh, procloud server implementation the information what the server currently provides so this is my model the publisher is Spark systems, yeah, um, OSLC services. This is the most important information here. Here we have the creation factories and here we have the capa uh, query capabilities. Here I get the information, what I can uh, create and here what I can query. And when I go back here uh, in the web page here, oh, it's this one. I see more informations of, for instance, what do we like to see? An attribute, yeah. What an attribute consists of and what we can do with an attribute. So if I use this and paste it, oh, sorry, paste it. I get the information. What is an uh, attribute in Enterprise Architect? What properties we have? So we have a title and this is the, the name of the Enterprise Architect attribute and so on. So this is where we get all the meta information about what we can get from the OSLC server. But now let's um, start with our model. So this is how we can get, remember with QC, with query control, we get the root packages. This is the actual model, what I showed you previously. Here, and this is the model I'm currently looking at with my two root packages. I would like to follow now the nested resources of this one. So the actual call is this one, yeah. So here is the, the user, the authentication token added to this, to this request. And here, uh, to this package, which has features and nested resources, I would like to add now something new. I would like to add a connector. So in here, this is the interesting part. Um, or one of the interesting parts. Um, I'm calling now a new user interface, which just queries the data. And some parts of this user interface uh, are uh, filled with data also provided by the OSLC um, server, like what, uh, if, what connectors, what connector types we have available. Yeah. So this is the form, the, the concrete connector form. And here the data source of this uh, drop-down list will be uh, filled with this uh, information here. So I'm running through this implementation. So here I get my, uh, what's this request. So that's the call. I need to have my authentication token to get all my link types. And as a response, I get the following information. Yeah, so this is what the server provides me. And here I get the list of all available connectors and maybe in other versions of the ProCloud server implementation, I get more or hope, not, not hopefully less. Um, and um, this is what I query here and just provide to the user interface 
So if I run and show it, so this is what I have got from the, from the Procloud server uh, response. So here I would like to create an uh, association connector to the same element. So this is the easy one. So I was lazy and I didn't implement kind of project browser, which allows me to select here another element. So I just use the same um, GUID. Uh, and that's it, what, what is really uh, required. So I can also uh, state the name, my connector. And if I create it, uh, this happens what we saw previously in the, in the, in the slide deck. If I go back to my enterprise side deck and reload it, you will see the new created connector. What we have created now with my own uh, OSSC client, and I can also copy this squid. Remember, that's the simple way. I will create another connector from this package. Create new connector. So, host, would it be possible to to wrap it up? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm nearly finished. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, we're just okay. a bit behind on time. Ah, okay, okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah, just state the name, and this is what we get. And the same can happen uh, when we create a new element. So I just reload it. And that's it. So now we have this connector. And it would also be possible to add here a new element, create a new item, uh, select what item you would like to create and create it. But yeah, it's more or less the same. And we will see it in, in Enterprise Architect or in uh, Web EA because we are accessing the same resources. And that's it, actually. So now I hope we have still time for a few questions if there are. 